when kids are babies, they have no idea if you decide to get rid of a binky or a teething ring that has seen better days. But when they get older, their toys start getting bigger too. And they start taking over your home. You don't want to be mean, but you'd rather not deal with all that clutter. So how do you get rid of the toys and the excess without all the drama? Today, let's talk about that. Hey everybody, my name is Katie Berry. If we haven't met before, I am a cleaning expert, a blogger, and an author, and for over 12 years, my books and my blog have been helping millions of people around the world get their homes under control. Today, I want to start helping you. So let's talk about why toy clutter happens. It doesn't just come down to indulgent grandparents or doting aunties who just shower the kids with toys. A lot of times, the parents have some responsibility for it too, especially if a parent is facing uncertain economic times or they themselves didn't grow up with a parent that was emotionally engaged or didn't have a lot while they were growing up, they will compensate by getting their children lots of gifts so that their kids have all the things that they didn't have. And that's part of being a great parent is making sure your children are better off than you are. But at some point, it becomes too much. And then we add to it by getting new gifts for birthdays and Christmas and because school graduation happened and because you had a bad day and there was a sale and mom got a great score on eBay. Eventually, the toys start taking over your home and your kids don't even play with them all. And I'm going to tell you something that's a secret that lots of parents don't get until they're actually, you know, older. The reason why your kids don't play with all those toys is because they have too many. Yeah, I know. Nobody wants to hear it from a grandparent or an old woman, but it's true. When you get to this side of parenting, you can look back at what you did when your kids were little and realize all that excess just overwhelms the kids. So if you're tired of picking up all your kids' toys from all over the house and stepping on them, oh, nothing hurts more than those Lego in the middle of the night on a bare foot, right? Then there are some ways to get rid of toy clutter that's drama-free and that's still respectful to your kids. The first way to convince your child to part with toys you know they're no longer interested in Tell them that you're finding the toy a new friend. Children have a natural inborn generosity that uh, somehow gets crushed out of us as we get older. But foster it in your children by helping them find new friends for old toys. Think about it. You have probably talked yourself out of getting rid of something that you basically felt was just clutter and you weren't very attached to. But you looked at it and you thought, wow, that's too good to get rid of. That's too good to throw away. Your children are no different in that sense. When they see a toy, they think, oh, if I get rid of it, it's just going into the trash. But if you tell them that it's going to a new child, to a new home, it's going to find a new friend, they get a lot more on board. And in fact, you can take it to a new friend. You can take it down to a children's shelter. You can take it to a domestic violence shelter. You can contact your local children's hospital to see if they'll accept donations. Local daycares often accept donations. And another place that is always looking for them, CASA, the Child Advocate Support Network, they often need toys for children who have just been removed from a difficult situation or who are about to go into the foster care system. And giving those children toys of their own gives them a sense of ownership and continuity, comfort that children need when they're facing a difficult time like that. So contact those areas, get your child on board, and see if they're willing to help find a new friend for their old toys. So when you're getting them psyched up for this, have them imagine how much another child will enjoy receiving this gift, especially children in those unfortunate circumstances, how much comfort it will provide for them. And that will help motivate your child to that generosity that children have deep inside themselves naturally. Speaking of motivation, I'd like to motivate you to hit like right now. Thank you. Now, for the second one, sending toys on vacation. Of course, you're not going to be going down to the travel agent or hopping online to buy a plane ticket for the toys. But you and your child can get a box and pack up the toys that need a good vacation and put them in there, tape the box up, and then write some exotic location on it. You know, the North Pole, or Tahiti, or Fiji, or the South Pole, or Grandma's house. That's right, you can send your toys wherever you want in the world. The child's not going to know. They just know their toys are going on a fun trip. So depending on your child and their memory, you may find them asking for the first couple of weeks, oh, I wonder what Teddy's doing in the Himalayas. But that's normal. They'd ask if Grandma went to the Himalayas just because it's an exotic-sounding location, which was kind of the idea, right? 
after a couple of weeks, if they don't mention it, that's your sign that it's okay to get rid of that box, go take it down to the charity center, go take it to the thrift store, go give it to somebody else. It's your sign that it's okay. Your child has forgotten all about those toys. On the other hand, if you don't want to get rid of those toys without your child's explicit permission, one way to go about this is send your child a postcard from the toys on vacation saying something like, hey, we really are having a great time. The weather here is beautiful. We'd like to live here now. We found a little boy or a little girl who wants to take us in. Is it okay with you if we're their new friend? Again, it triggers that generosity that children have within them. It gets your child on board with letting go of those toys and your child has a say in it. The third option is to display the memories. And this is kind of the slow goodbye with toys. You take the toys that you know they're not playing with and you put them on a shelf some location where they can't actually reach them, but they can see them. If they don't ask about them after a week or two, that's your sign that your child wasn't really attached to those toys. Try boxing them up and leaving the box on a shelf somewhere. If another week or two go by and your child still doesn't remember it, it's time to get rid of those toys. Your child's okay. So I promised you that I would tell you when to time this so that your children would be excited to get rid of their toys that they aren't playing with. And it's simply this. Do this routinely every year before a birthday or before holidays where they receive gifts. So Valentine's or Easter or Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, Diwali, whatever the holiday is that your child receives gifts, make sure you go through this routine because they'll be excited to send the old toys to a new home, to a new friend, so that they're not jealous of the new toys. If you pair it like that and link those things together, your children will actually get on board with getting rid of toy clutter and you, my friend, will have a less cluttered home and a happier child. I'll see you next week. Take care.